In this video, we're going to solve Putnam 2019 number A2. This is a pure geometry problem, which is really quite rare for the Putnam. But let's take a look at it. So the setup is that you have this triangle ABC, and you have some information about it. First of all, let I be the center of the inscribed circle. So that's the in center. And G be the median, which means that if we took this point and drew it to the midpoint of AB and did the same thing with the other vertices, they'd intersect at a point G, that is the median. And you're given this information that IG is actually parallel to the base AB. And then finally, you're given information about this angle beta, that beta is twice the inverse tangent of one third. And the question asks you to determine what alpha is. Okay, so one way to go about trying to determine alpha is maybe splitting this up into pieces and using trigonometry, since you know beta in terms of trigonometric values as well. But let's actually use the fact that we know that IG is parallel to the base to do something with this. So first of all, one fact about the median is if we extend it out to this other side, then this length is actually twice this length. Or in other words, this length is a third of this total length. So we have that this triangle right over here has sides whose ratios are two thirds of this larger triangle that we're dealing with. So in particular, if we let r be the radius of this inscribed circle, which um, has an angle that's a right angle with the base AB when we drop it, then the height of this entire triangle is three times that. So this length here would be 3r. And I'm going to let this point have a name, maybe call this D and call this E. All right, so why bother considering this height in the first place? Well, if we're going to try to find out what this angle alpha is, it might help to figure out um, what this height is and then use trigonometry on these two triangles in some way. Okay, so now let's see if we can use the information that we have to figure out some other side lengths in the picture that's involved. So first of all, if we drew the line segment from I to B, we get this triangle right over here, and this angle here actually has to be beta over two. A way to see this is that if we extended this out to here, we get a right angle as well, and this triangle here would be similar to this triangle over here, and the similarity would have the two angles over here being the same, so these angles get split in half. Okay, so as a consequence, we can actually get some type of information about this length EB. In particular, IE over EB is the tangent of beta over 2. All right, but we have that beta over 2 is the inverse tangent of a third, so this is actually a third. And since IE is R, that makes EB have a length of 3R. So let's include that in our picture. Okay, another piece of information we have is about this big triangle. We have this angle beta, which we actually know, and then we have this side length DE, so we can figure out DB. In particular, CD over DB is the tangent of beta. Now here we have beta over two in terms of the inverse tangent of one third, so we'd have to use a double angle formula to write this in terms of the tangent of beta over 2. This would be twice tangent beta over 2 over 1 minus tangent squared of beta over 2. Okay, and tangent of beta over 2 is a third, so this is twice a third divided by 1 minus a third squared, which is a ninth, giving us 2 thirds over 8 ninths, which is 3 fourths. All right, now CD itself was 3R, so if 3R over DB is 3 fourths, DB has to be 4R. Okay, so let's write that in. DB itself is 4R. Let's stare at this picture again. So we have a bunch of information now. We have these side lengths of the in radius is R, this is 3R, this whole thing is 4R, and this piece here is 3R. So that actually means that DE is R because it's the difference of DB and EB. 
Now let's see if we can figure out anything about from that picture. We have the in radius here being r, and then we have this length being r as well. Well, let's think about that in terms of a circle. So you have this circle, its in radius is r, and then you're saying that you go r out from the foot of this point here, E, and you get this point, D. But that actually means that this point here, because it's distance R from the center, is actually tangent to this line segment. So in fact, this line segment CD has to be a side length of the triangle. So A actually coincides with D, and as a consequence, A is actually a right angle. Okay, so this is actually quite a really interesting solution, and let's think about how we went about it. I mean, it seems kind of magical, but the idea was we needed to figure out what alpha was, so we split this triangle using this height right here, the altitude. The reason being it splits into two right angle triangles that'll help us to figure out what alpha is using trigonometry. That's what we thought at, for, at face value. But then it turned out by analyzing the situation, knowing that this entire height had to be three times this height right over here, together with the trigonometry we had in terms of beta and beta over two, it allowed us to completely circumvent a trigonometric argument for finding alpha by taking a look at this diagram right over here to realize that A and D actually have to coincide, telling us that alpha is in fact 90 degrees. Great, so an interesting solution to an interesting problem. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel.